Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at another of DWK's Totally Legit Recaps of My Little Pony Season 7. This is Episode 10, A Royal Problem. I have questions about that opening image, but I'll get to that in a second. I don't really know what the hell's going on with this one, because uh, obviously I haven't got this far in the series. I kind of want to fix that now, and I also want to blame DWK for making me want to watch a show... For kids about magical talking ponies. And yet I still kind of want to do it. Even despite having said that out loud. And it really does sound just as bad out loud as it did in my head. One of the rare times where what I thought I was going to say. Sounded exactly like I thought. Unfortunately. Yeah. God I'm just. I'm just imagining right now what my wife is thinking. It was like ah. My husband's talking about magical talking ponies that he wants to watch have fun. <laughs> Why did I marry him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how I don't live on the couch, I have no idea. So we're just going to jump in and see where the hell DWK goes with this. And like always, we know where it's going. It's always the gutter. I said it last time, and that was the Thirsty Pony episode. They actually had a Thirsty Pony episode talking about cream pie. They know what they're doing. That wasn't even DWK. He, he pointed it out, but th that was original content right there. Yeah. Sometimes I, I just, I'm not sure I'm more shocked by what DWK adds to it or what he doesn't have to. Yeah. So if you haven't already, there's a link below to the original episode. Make sure to hit it up and let's go find out what the hell's going on. And by going on, I mean, oh God, oh God, oh God. That That's usually a pretty valid way to react to anything DDWK does. It's usually accurate too. Yeah. Okay, first off, that's Brad Pitt, right? I, I don't know why, but for some reason, Brad Pitt, short hair, bit of a fuzz beard, and... Something about damage to his face. I'm going with... Is this a clip from... Oh, God, what is it called? The one where he was beating himself up. Oh, wow, I actually forgot the name of the movie. I'm actually feeling a bit of shame over this. And the bottom says, MFW? I don't know what that means. Monday, Friday, Wednesday? We get a Celestia Luna episode. Whoa, they actually get character development? Huh. Usually that's just incidental. I mean, Luna's actually had a few, but Celestia? Oh, I don't think they've ever had that, unless I missed it, which is entirely possible. Hmm. Fight Club, that's what it was called, Fight Club. Wow, yeah. I just had to think about, oh, you never talk about, and then, yeah, Fight Club, yeah. Wait, how does Fight Club... How does Fight Club work with My Little Pony? I mean, last episode we got Big Lebowski matching My Little Pony. Now we're getting... Maybe I have the episode wrong. Maybe it's a completely different movie. This just happens to be Brad Pitt. I just... I kind of wanted to be Fight Club just to see what the hell they have in common at this point. My God. I haven't been fucked like that. Nope, that, that is Fight Club. I also had no idea what she just said. It was way too quiet. Um... That face, wow. What? What the hell was that? Alright, so, Gloomy's like, yo, Twy, Twy, you, you alright, man? You've been doing that uh, hentai anal scene face for a couple <laughs> years, and it's making me nervous. And Twy's like, well, we've been waiting six years for a Celestia and Luna episode, and you're the one who gets to do this, so I am kind of taking it up the ass right now. Oh, that the first Celestia episode is in Twilight. Wow. Is to just relax and let it slide in. Dude, if you fuck this up, I'm going to shove my foot oh. so far up your ass, you won't even like it. And so Big Mama's like, well, there's nothing to <laughs> right, sister? And Luna's all, oh no, everything's fine, you enormous white cunt. I'm not oh. even mad I don't get a throne. See? Gravy. Oh, yeah, I she wish I could say that tiny ballerina Twily just filled my head with a bunch of lewd thoughts, and I mean, she did, but that wasn't all. I started thinking about how comforting it'd be to have a tiny little music box pony just sitting on your desk, someone to talk to whenever you wanted to actually cared about your day and your life and would take it with some modicum of seriousness instead of just firing off some attempted banter and then moving on to the next topic. Wouldn't that be nice? 
God, I'm so alone. So Gloomy's like, God, you know, Twilight, relatable. didn't you tell me that when you were studying under Celestia, she kind of let you so figure just stuff out on your own instead of breathing down your neck the whole time? Right, because she trusted me. So you don't no. trust? Nope. Oh, yeah, well, you know what you're the perfect size for right now? Starlight, don't you even think about it. Then shut the fuck up or your new title's going to be oh. Princess Butt Plug. Dude, no wonder Sel <laughs> I did not see that joke coming. Oh, that's also probably not the right form. Oh, oh, I, oh, I should not have said that. Oh. Why does that keep happening? Celestia has such an enormous ass. She eats a giant stack of pancakes yeah. with whipped cream and fruit every oh, morning. Damn. Not that I'm complaining Actually, at all. That. This is like when you're in elementary school and you learn that a rainbow happens because of light refraction. It's still magical, but now you understand it too. Luna, you know Why if you dried it? that because lavender or used lot. incense okay. or oil burners, you could get the same effect with way less work. I'm just saying. And Glimmy's like, dude, this is bullshit. They're literally pissed at each other about pancakes and flower arrangements. It's like listening Sounds to like family. bickering teenagers teenagers trying to out Martha Stewart each other. You'd think they'd or be family. a few millennia past this kind of shit. Dude, no. Age is its own animal. It sticks with you into adulthood and it's going to take a serious kick yeah. in the ass to get them to admit that they both have a problem and they both need to work on it. And Glimpse like, don't worry, I got the perfect oh, idea. No. Freaky no. Friday, motherfuckers. And Glimpse all, come on, man. How come I get the stamp but none of them? How did you do well, that? If you ate some of those pancakes for once, you'd get a little cushion back there instead of looking like you got two box cuts. Where your ass should be. Why are you always such a condescending dick? Why are you always such a whiny little bitch? So Starlight's like, guys, just do each other's jobs for a day and you'll get like empathy or some shit. And they're like, all right, fine, whatever. Dude, walk a mile. Salt, dude, this is gonna be so easy. All I gotta do is smile and talk to people. But then she's like, oh fuck, I social interaction. I can't smile oh hell I hate no. People, I, how do scissors work? I can't. Yeah, no, that's the face I understand. How, how do I stand in a place? Fuck shit, my face doesn't work. Fuck shit. And Glimmy. He's like, yeah, no, I'm agreeing with her on this one. If you finish that sentence, I promise you'll dream about your dad's gooch every night for the rest of your life. Oh, so, fuck. Luna fucks off and Princess Thunderthigh shows up and she's like, Moon raised. What's next? She's already oh, drunk. Yeah, it's that time. No, wait, that was college, Celestia. You're a different person. Now. But for real, so when you're alone for 10 minutes and you already start wigging out. Imagine spending every single night completely and utterly alone century after century. I mean, I've only done it for the last five years and I have constant conversations with myself, mostly talking myself out of suicide. It's a credit to your sister that she held together as long around, as she I did. Then she's like, I can talk to ponies in their dreams. And I'm like, sorry, Snowbugs. Um, spending all night talking to people in an intangible fantasy realm doesn't replace actual socialization trust me anyway sunbutt fires up dreamscape and she's like holy shit look at all these dank memes but then and glimmy saw look dude nightmare moon's back gods have mercy that's not nightmare moon that's my sister's old myspace account no dude, what not the myspace what's up bro what the hell, the hell? Me, dog? this can't be I deleted you after senior year spring break. But no, you didn't, bruh. You were gonna, but you popped some Molly and forgot. So this Molly? is hot stuff. The physical manifestation of Celestia's original Facebook account from college. And she's like, bro, oh, why'd you God. turn into such a pussy? You should be out there doing keg stands and getting she's laid. She's uh, No, I'll never turn into you again. My days of puking in my own bed and getting the clap every month are over. Bruh, every inside, month? You know how alpha you are. Get rid of that emo perma virgin so your life can be epic again. Again. I'm not emo. I'm alternative. Stop labeling me. Oh, oh my god. god, you're such a whiny little pussy. Fuck you, you, you douchebag yeah. poser. And Glimmy's like, it's so my fault. I couldn't figure out how to make you guys stop fighting, so I tried digging around on your social media, and one link led to another, and. So Flapjack Flanks is all, dude, sis, you gotta help me, man. And Muna's like, bro, we're Freaky Friday, remember? I can't do it. It'd be like Lindsay Lohan having sex with Mark Harmon while she's still in Jamie Lee Curtis's body. And speaking of traumatizing what? shit, she better fix this quick or Glimmer's gonna be straight jacket filling. Fuck, oh, man, God. I'm so sorry I was such a dick to you. Your job's really hard. Same, I'm too much of a spurg to do what you do. Look, What's there's only one way to truly defeat your old social media account, and I think you know what it is. You can do it. Gotta go I on Twitter and delete everything. You, man. So 
sudden, Butt's like, all right, get the fuck out, both of you. And Hot Stuff's like, bruh, you can't just is get rid of us for your past, dog. What are you talking about? I don't even know you. Yeah, you guys kind of look a little bit like me and my sister, but you're not us, and we've never heard of you. No! Well, I mean, no, plausible really have, but... deniability! And Celestia's all, man, seeing what we were like as kids made me realize a lot of the big things have changed, but a lot of the little stuff hasn't. Getting older helps, but some stuff, especially when it comes to family, doesn't get better until you really nope. work on it i think we should give that a shot and huh? even that yeah, it just gets we weird definitely should and glimmer's like so what? they wake up friday gets unfreaked and luna's Wait, was like that all no a dream? wonder the map sent you glimmer you're the only person with the combined comprehension of stupid emotional baggage and utter lack of respect for authority necessary to complete this mission hey, oh I god she was guys. i just don't suck your dicks like everyone else does ah, come on no one sucks our dicks hey guys did you miss me okay never mind i'll give you that <laughs> okay there's a lot to say about this one evo celestia actually made an appearance cool two i love how they sum it up at the end as just glimmy not caring about authority and knowing enough about fucked up emotional states to actually be helpful and that's like yeah that's basically her she's mental baggage the pony i mean a lot of them do but definitely her i love how that actually was necessary i was like ah oh, no one talks to them it's like ah oh, uh, twilight's back I can see why Celestia sent her out to learn from real life. <sighs> I gotta say, though, it's just a tiny little thing. DWK highlighting just all the little clips of Luna just not enjoying social interactions. Like, mm, kill me! Yeah. That is super relatable. It's like, oh, yeah, I know what that's like. Might be surprised because I'm actually a massive introvert. So is my wife. Yeah, we're just like, oh, God, we have to live together now. It's like, oh, oh, you're, you're going to be around me all the time. Oh, I'm not sure which one of us would be saying that. Probably both. Yeah. But I, I just love the face she made because it's so freaking relatable. It's like, oh, I have to smile for hours and be relatable. Well, at least I don't have to smile. <laughs> Oh, God, that sounds like torture. Can you imagine having to do that? God, or can you imagine if, like you were an introvert and decide, do you want to be fun? Make you an idiot of yourself for hours every day because you actually seem to enjoy it, even though you really don't, but you do. I mean, can you imagine the idiot that would do that willingly? <laughs> I mean, that would, that would just be... <laughs> uh, uh, I don't get it either, but I actually enjoy this. So all the same, everyone, if you haven't already, there's a link to the original video down below. Make sure to hit it up. And I'm not going to show it, but at the end of the episode, DWK usually does a little music remix that he puts to something from the episode. In this one, he did Evanescence's Wake Me Up Inside, lip synced to Nightmare Moon and Hot Stuff, whatever she's called, while they're fighting and still lip synced to the song. It's actually pretty damn impressive. Go check it out. Check that link out just for that. The rest of the episode's good, but that is actually just downright impressive. Yeah. DWK's really come a long way on his editing skill. Like, before it's just stills, and now it's... He's pretty, it's almost full-on abridging at this point. It's just one step shy, because he's still technically recapping. But he's just doing enough of his own stuff. That it's almost at that level. It's crazy, and just watch the progression. It's actually really fun. So, yeah. Again, link below. Hit it up. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios. Thank you.